for 20 years. He got married to her and he left to jihad in Syria, as many brothers do. And when he left to jihad in Syria, which, as I told you, I don't encourage brothers to do it, but brothers, young brothers, don't listen, as usual. So, they don't listen. They say that this sheikh is against jihad. So they go. Now we have brothers and sisters who don't listen. There are sisters who go for jihad by themselves. You know about this. As I mentioned this, today, today, I received a question regarding a sister who went a river to Muskina. She want to go to any Muslim country. She came to know a mujahid online. طبعاً the Mujahid had some time, yeah, I need to, to go to <laughs> Okay, but anyway, maybe the Mujahid was doing jihad over internet, yeah, and he was looking for some yeah, and websites that help him in jihad. And by accident, Maskeen, he went to a matrimonial website. <laughs> okay, so anyway, she came to know him, and they agreed to get married. Okay, so she traveled all the way to Turkey by herself. And she met him in Turkey. And they got married there. She came here, had no certificate, nothing. She contacted us in the Islamic Sharia Council to produce her a certificate that she got married to this brother. So she can join him again. I said, most likely this is a scam the, to the sister that she contacted me to help the sister. I said, most likely this is a deceit. Okay, this man, who is a mujahid, he is responsible to find a way to get the marriage certificate. Agree? Not she. Okay, and if she got married to him, she should go back there. She should live with him there. Why she came back here? Yes? Anyway, so sisters, please, they should be careful. Uh, as I mentioned this, I was going to write an article about sisters going for jihad. I consulted some brothers, and they said maybe it is not a big issue. So I, I changed my mind. The reason I wanted to write this article is the fact that I heard some weird stories about sisters going for jihad in Syria. In, uh, in Norway last year, two sisters, one I think 16, yeah, 16 or 17, and the other one 19. They just left their parents and they went for jihad. I said, this is interesting, mashallah, tabarakallah. Okay. I want to warn the sisters and the brothers. When they go for jihad, they become really very, very vulnerable. And they might meet some mujahid who are fake mujahid, or who are liars. Or they might meet mujahids, and the mujahids there, my dear respected brothers and sisters, are not all practicing people. Many of them are jahil. They just joined jihad because they want to die fi sabilillah. They don't know. Some brothers who went for jihad and they said those who were doing jihad with us, they were not praying the five times, the daily prayers. But they joined jihad. Okay, and some of them, they, were, they are just fighting, fighting the regime there. They are not really doing it fi sabilillah. And the sisters, because they are naive, they think that, okay, let us just go. And they came to know this brother who had a beard, mashallah, and who say Quran and Sunnah. They think that he is one of the companions, one of the Sahaba. <laughs> they get married to him. Okay? Uh, when I, I was thinking about writing this article for a long time, a few days ago, I received an email from one of the Mashayikh in Saudi Arabia who uh, collected the tweets of one of the old mujahideen who joined the jihad in Afghanistan 
in the early 80s in the 80s and that person who is yani a well known mujahid he's living now in Saudi Arabia he wrote in the twitter okay he said that I'm writing this to warn the sisters from going to jihad to Syria by themselves he said when we were in Afghanistan doing jihad many of the women of the mujahideen when al-hilf al-shamali Mas'ud Shah and others took over he said many of the women of the mujahideen were raped and took as slaves by the warlords in Afghanistan and he said he remembered a story that he will never forget in his life he said when we were in Kandahar and the, uh, the, the uh, Americans were bombarding us, okay, throwing bombs, etc. Uh, and then we were attacked by some of the uh, uh, allies against the Mujahideen. He said there was a Mujahid with his fam- family, big family, with children, and everyone left. And this person, he left, of course, to, to run from here and there. Uh, a group of people came to those women and they captured them. They hijacked them. And they distributed them in front of our eyes to the warlords. And the warlords took them in their cars and left. It was a war, we could not do anything. The brother, the husband came back and he was asking, where is my family, where is my family? All of us knew that their family, their his daughters and his wife were kidnapped by those people and were given as slaves to the warlords. No one could tell him the reality because we could not see. He was looking at them between the killed people. He did not find them and he said, were they hijacked, were they hijacked, were they kidnapped, were they kidnapped? No one could tell him the reality. He mentioned so many stories, sad stories really. He said, after some time in Kandahar, when they, the uh, Americans and their allies were uh, bombarding us and it was chaos, there were a group of Mujahideen, Arab Mujahideen, who were killed. And their wives and the children remained there. He said, I contacted Hikmat Yar. And I told him that, listen, those Arabs came to defend you and now their wives and daughters will be taken and raped in front of your eyes. Shames on you, Afghani people, to allow those women, the women of the Mujahideen, to be raped in front of you. And you know what happened to so and so. And he said, I contacted, and at that time, Kandahar was under the uh, leadership of Mullah Umar. So he said, Mullah Umar, when he knew this before Hikmat Yar, he said, By Allah, I will not let in my body a single drop of blood until I secure those women to leave Kandahar, even if all the Mujahideen were killed. So he said he stopped all the Mujahideen from leaving uh, Kandahar, and then Hikmat Yar and some other people came to help the people in Kandahar, and then they managed to uh, find a secure path for those women, the Arab women, to leave Kandahar, and many people were killed. That's why many scholars in the past said that it is makruh to take women for jihad. Yeah? If you know that they will, something like this might happen to them, it is very disliked to take women to jihad and it might be haram. Okay? Do we want this to happen to our sisters just because they want to go for jihad out of just zeal and hype? So I would like to send this message to our sisters. Okay? I strongly advise you not to go for jihad and I will meet Allah Jalla wa'ala and I will tell Allah Jalla wa'ala that I told them not to go to jihad in Syria. Uh-huh. I will be responsible for that. But to go there and to become a burden and then you become raped, etc., etc., and then we'll try to find a solution for you to come back and then 
and you know what may happen. Many brothers who have went to jihad, they have been kidnapped. You know this. You know this or not. They are kidnapped by the Syrians. And as it happened during the Afghani time, there were just uh, Murtazaka, what is Murtazaka? Those who just uh, kidnap people and they go and sell them to the Americans. There are people who kidnap some of the Mujahideen who come to Syria for jihad. They kidnap them and they sell them to the Syrian government. And you know this, uh, the story of that mother who her husband was kidnapped. No one knew about him. And then she traveled by herself with her daughter. She met the authorities there. And of course, they ripped her off. She paid a lot of money in order just to see her son. And she found that her son was kidnapped. Okay, and he was imprisoned by this violent regime. They said that when she saw her son, she didn't know him. Because he was tortured, prevented from food, etc., etc. He lost uh, more than half of his weight. So do we want this to happen to our sisters? Of course not. Yeah? And Allah Jalla Ala did not make it obligatory on you. I said to one sister who asked for uh, w- whether it is obligatory, I said to her, as I said to all brothers who ask about this, I said to them, is this the only obligation fardul ayn that you have? You have many fardu ayn. Everyone has so many fardu ayn. So why are you looking for this fardul ayn only? Yeah, no one. Uh, why? You need. We need to understand. You have fardu ayn to obey your parents. You have other types of fardu ayn. Okay. And moreover, moreover, who is giving you fatwa that you have to go for jihad to Syria? Those who are giving this are known people in Syria, not all scholars in Syria. I confirmed this long time ago, and I have been confirming this all the time. Whenever I see a Syrian scholar, or I know of a Syrian scholar, etc., I double-check with him. Have you declared that it is wajib for every single one in the world to come to join jihad? And they say no. It is just only very few people who go there and... The, the, the Mujahideen there, they tell them that no, it is wajib, call the brothers to come and let them come, etc., etc. And I believe that many of those calls are coming from people who have been infiltrated. Yes, infiltrated. So, young people should be careful and should not be naive. Yeah? She said not, they should not be naive. There are hundreds of ways we can help our brothers and sisters in Syria or anywhere in the world. Okay? But not through this. Anyway, so, uh, but in particular I was saying about this marriage. Marriage over Skype with the Mujahideen or with the Mujahidat. Right? Because I told you about that story of a sister who said that she's a mujahid and she was looking for a brother to get married to her. Have I told you last time about it? Yeah, there was a sister, uh, I think uh, on Facebook, or what, she announced that she is in the land of Ribaq, in, land, in the land of Sham, in the land of victory, in the land of so-and-so. Yeah? Religious, typical religious blackmailing. And she was calling for brothers to get married to her yeah and two three brothers went and it was a scam and they were arrested or maybe kidnapped okay so we have to be very careful young brothers have to be very very careful otherwise they will put themselves into so many problems and they will put us into so many problems okay for no faida at all okay